Yes, so I would like to now introduce uh, today's speaker, Maine-based artist, Lesher Soger. Her paintings are currently on display in the museum's auditorium. Um, and after my intro, I will show you uh, an image of the gallery space so you can kind of get a sense of what the exhibition looks like. Uh, and today is really a deep dive into the symbolic meeting of the Pasanka. So Lesha was born in Philadelphia to Ukrainian immigrant parents. She graduated from the Philadelphia College of Art in 1974 with a degree in fine art. She moved to Brooks, Maine in 1980, where she lives at the end of a dirt road with her husband, John, a woodworker. Together they garden, build stone walls, make dandelion wine, and run a small hydroelectric station. In addition to flourishing as an artist, Lesha is a dedicated and enthusiastic teacher of art who has given instruction in public schools, residencies through the Maine Arts Commission, and museum workshops for 25 years. She has also illustrated two children's books and continues to honor her roots by introducing the art of Pasanka in workshops throughout the state. She has exhibited extensively in the state of Maine and beyond. And Unfortunately, this lecture was scheduled about a year ago, <laughs> and this was supposed to be in combination with her exhibition opening, um, and she was going to teach several workshops for us. Um, but seeing as we, we can't do that right now at the museum um, in person, uh, this will have to make do. So I just quickly want to share my screen and show you our exhibit space. So this is down in our auditorium for those of you who are familiar with the museum. Um, and our auditorium is, well, this is where we would be seat, uh, sitting if we were in person today. Um, and over the last couple of years, we've really started using this space to showcase various contemporary artists. And so when we met Lesha and saw her work, we were just blown away by how beautiful everything was and just how symbolic all the paintings were, very much like the icons. And so here you can see a, a, just an arrangement of her work. And we're going to be examining uh, about 10 paintings really in depth. And we have uh, high resolution images to show you throughout the presentation. And then this also just kind of gives you uh, an idea of the various work that is on display down there. And it's sort of broken up into different thematic segments. So we have you know, segments that really focus on nature and the natural world. Um, others sections focus more on this idea of generation and changes throughout generations. So with that, I will turn it over to Lesha. Hello. <laughs> I, I am delighted to be here today. I have never done anything like this, um, but uh, when Amy asked if I would be interested in, in, in sharing um, so a little bit of history and the evolution of this ancient craft, I, I said, yes, I will give it my best shot over Zoom. So, um, and as Amy mentioned, happy spring, happy equinox. It's uh, so timely to be having this, this uh, presentation today. Um, I, I'd like to just give a little background about myself before I, I dive in. Um, I, as Amy mentioned, I um, am first generation Ukrainian. Uh, my parents immigrated during the Second World War they first uh, went to Scranton and then to um, Philadelphia, where I was born and raised. Uh, Ukrainian was my first language. I did not learn how to speak English until I started playing with the neighborhood kids and watching TV. So that was, uh, that was definitely my teacher. My neighborhood was my teacher. Um, and at that time, there was a huge Ukrainian diaspora in Philadelphia. Uh, we had our own businesses. Uh, there were community centers. There were churches, of course, uh, Ukrainian Girl Scout, Girl and Boy Scouts. I was part of the Ukrainian Girl Scouts. Um, and these new immigrants really uh, strove to maintain uh, traditions in this new and strange country that they came to. And one of the traditions was um, piss and come making every spring. So 
when we hold an egg, I should actually have an egg in my hand, but, but imagine that. Um, when we hold an egg, this perfect oval, and think about what the potential for what lies within this, this new life. Um, it's truly, I think it's a wonder and, and kind of a miracle. Um, and ancient people really uh, were in awe and revered this seemingly inanimate object. Um, there was such a deep reverence. And many creation myths believed that, in fact, the earth was hatched from an egg. And you can well imagine that, the cracking of the shell and the eruption of this new life. Um, the egg evokes the beginning, the very source of all life. And I've actually represented um, this very concept with um, the first image you're about to see, which is um, a watercolor, and it is entitled The Cosmic Egg. Um, the exact origin of the Pisanka is obscured by time, but archaeologists have actually found ceramic glazed eggs um, in Ukraine about 1300 BC. Um, and some of the motifs have even been linked to the Tripillion culture, which was a matriarchal society um, dating back about 3000 years ago. And even further back, um, there were certain motifs that can be traced to the Bronze Era some 5000 years ago. So really ancient, really ancient, beautiful work. Um, and this is curious because the, 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 ge the geographical location of Ukraine actually made it um, less accessible to new cultural influences. So the rich ornamentation and design of the Pisanka was able to um, in fact flourish and grow. And uh, the Ukrainian, um, the Ukrainian woman was really responsible, God bless her, for preserving um, this tradition and passing it down from one generation to the next. Um, fast forward to the 20th century when Pisanka design um, and the craft, the art form, underwent a uh, really big decline due to religious oppression uh, during the uh, when the Bolsheviks were in control um, because Pisanka was linked to the, at that time, it was linked to the Christian holiday Easter. So entire collections uh, were just destroyed, um, but eggs were hidden and the craft went underground, so to speak, and it survived. And in fact, uh, it is practiced to, practice to this day. Um, Ukrainian eggs are known the world over. Uh, everybody, uh, uh, many, many, many people have heard of Pisankit. Um, and to me, they are a tangible documentation of a people's identity um, and antiquity and their heritage. And I feel that they really symbolize um, this people's resilience as a nation in maintaining this tradition. Um, the word pisanka actually comes from the verb to write. So one actually writes on the egg with a tool called a kistka. Now, this is a very traditional one. There are many, many, many different kind, kinds at, at, in this modern day. But this one is simply a wooden dowel with a copper funnel and beeswax. So I will give a little demonstration um, at the end of this talk, um, but essentially you heat the tool in the flame of the candle and you dip it into your beeswax and then you write on your egg. It is a wax resist process, meaning that um, everything that is covered in wax will remain that particular color as it is then 
um, put in a dipped in a succession of dyes. Um, and you, you'll be able to see a little bit of that again when I do the demonstration. Um, the pattern is revealed only at the very end. And anyone who has made Piss and Kin knows how magical this moment is because you, you really do not see um, the completion, the reveal until that very last step. Um, and it's, it's, it's really very, very exciting. And any kind of egg can be used. Um, I have even found uh, an abandoned quail egg, very, very, very tiny that, that, I, um, that I wrote on, meant this was many years ago. And so in the case here, um, these are uh, chicken eggs. The smaller ones are chicken eggs. The larger ones are goose eggs. And the two in the very back are ostrich eggs, which I ordered. And um, they, come, they come blown out. So there is no yolk in the ostrich egg. Um, and for our ancestors, I have to say that the method of the method itself was not as important as what was actually written on the egg. So both the egg and the design combined um, created something most powerful. Um, they were a way of ensuring the return of spring, ensuring um, the return of the sun, light and warmth, um, uh, reawakening of nature after a long cold winter. And eventually with the arrival of Christianity, this old pagan ritual uh, was eventually accepted by the new religion and incorporated into the greatest Christian holiday, which um, of course is Easter, the resurrection of Christ. Ornamentation and symbolism developed over centuries. Since earliest times, people have worshiped the sun for light, warmth, and of course, life. Um, solar symbols were depicted on prehistoric objects, and they were the oldest ones to actually decorate Pisanke. Um, and one of the most popular solar symbols is the sun slash star rosette, which is usually an eight pointed star. And I I'm always amazed to think how these um, people of long ago knew that our sun was a star. Another really ancient symbol was the Bez Konechnik. And um, that is a meander. It's a never ending line denoting the cyclical ebb and flow of life. And in this next painting, which is called entitled Roots, and this is an oil, um, I use the meander as the connecting line, as the connection um, to my ancestors. Other symbols and designs evolved, such as geometric, floral, and animal. In time, Christian symbols, of course, were added, churches and crosses. And over the centuries, actually, Pisanke um, developed very distinct regional characteristics as well. I don't know if anyone is familiar with the Hutzels, which are a Carpathian mountain peoples um, that decorated their eggs in the most extraordinary, intricate geometric motifs um, incorporating animals uh, into their design. And so this um, is an egg entitled Protection. And I have done just that. I have incorporated geometric designs with the image of a snake, which was believed to protect all the people in the home. Now, this is the kind of snake that does not bite. So a garden snake. Um, through the application, through the application of these symbols, the people fervently believed that the egg acquired talismanic powers. And 
these powers protected the people. They believed that they protected them from evil spirits and illness and catastrophes, and that they ensured um, well-being and health, happiness, prosperity, all good things. And decorating eggs was not a hobby as we know it today. It was really a very serious and solemn activity. To give the pisanka the magic of talisman, it was decorated raw because of the trinity of symbols. So um, the, the yolks represented the sun, the, uh, the whites represented the moon, and the whole egg itself represented the universe. The talismanic power of the pisanka was also enhanced by beeswax, which was considered a magical wonder working substance. Dyes were made from particular plants and berries. And in some villages, even the water used was um, contributed to this magical power of the pisanka and had to be fetched from the creek at daybreak. And this is remarkable, and, and I really love this before the raven had a chance to wet its wing in the water. So it really makes us feel the incredible devotion um, that the people felt in preserving this and ensuring the, um, that the egg was properly honored before it was actually decorated. They were usually decorated when the household was asleep and prayers were said um, before beginning an egg. And, um, and the, ta the task was really looked upon as a holy act. Mothers passed methods and designs down to their daughters. And at one time, only married women were allowed to decorate eggs. So in this next image, um, Amy, can you, is it possible to show the triptych of that or no, they're just individual? No, I'm sorry. I actually only have this one image, um, but I do in my files have all three. So I will, when you're doing the demonstration, I'll look for that uh, image and show it after. How about that? Okay, well, that, okay, that would be great because um, actually this is a triptych. And so th this is my daughter's hands, but there, there are also hands holding, my hands are holding an egg and my mother's hands are holding an egg. And um, what that, so what this particular one means, these, these are my daughter's chubby little hands and they're holding an egg in which the ground is mostly white, which symbolizes um, kind of a purity, certainly, and kind of a blank page that will um, be filled up as as life evolves. And um, I, I will just mention my eggs are holding a, an egg called the 40 triangle egg, which um, denotes sort of the responsibilities of the middle years, um, taking care of the household, taking care of the children, your career, your elders. And then my mother's hands, which Amy said she will show you later on, um, uh, are holding an egg that is uh, black, and which denotes the the, the time before the uh, the dark time before dawn, with ladders uh, ascending into heaven. So Ukrainians believed that pisanka in the home would bring good fortune and health, which I have mentioned, and they had a place of honor, and. Um, there was a bowl of pisanka placed in in uh, in a very special, uh, either an alcove or or somewhere where cats couldn't get to them. <laughs> um, and this is a watercolor uh, of just that honoring honoring that wonderful egg. Um, they were also placed in thatched roofs to protect against lightning and fire. Um, beekeepers would have a pisanka in the hive. Now, can you guess why that would be? Uh, to ensure a good supply of honey. 
And I think, yep, we have an image of that. Um, the egg was, uh, you can you can see, th this is an oil on canvas also, and you can see um, the egg motif on that beautiful egg that is placed right in that hive. And mothers, if you have a bachelor that you would like to um, marry off, this is a good one for you. Um, they were rubbed on a young man's forehead to attract love. To encourage fertility, a woman was given a pisanka with a particular design. And um, they were also placed in graves of uh, the departed ones to ensure a good afterlife. So you can see that um, the, ta the talisman was, this, this was really revered. Uh, I mean, you could say it was superstition, but it went beyond that. It was, it was truly an innate belief in the culture at the power of this egg. Um, here's a little bit of personal experience. I actually visited Ukraine in 1996 um, and it, the trip just happened to coincide with Easter. And I was, I was just amazed at awe at the, uh, and at the reverence that, um, that the Pisanka still commanded. In every mom and pop store, there was a, a special place right in the window designated um, to Pisanke. And they were, they were in a basket. The basket contained an exquisite embroidered cloth and uh, there could be sheaves of wheat or uh, pussy willows included in that basket as well. On the Holy Saturday before Easter, um, I was able to partook, partake in the blessing of the eggs. And growing up, that was absolutely my most favorite holiday um, in church. These beautiful baskets were brought, I mean, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of beautifully uh, decorated and embellished baskets were brought to the church. Um, certainly, many piss and co were in them, but they also contained krashenke, which are hard-boiled eggs, um, usually dyed red uh, to, to be eaten on Easter morning, and the red symbolized the blood of Christ. Um, in those baskets, there were also um, babke, which uh, a babka is a Ukrainian sweetbread, so delicious. Um, maybe there are some, some folks out there who actually have made babka or know what they taste like. Um, uh, some people actually put rings of kobasi in their baskets and khreen, which is a beet relish, and uh, sometimes preserves or honey um, and any, any other foods that the people wanted blessed. And I, I have to say, um, witnessing this tradition that I grew up with um, in the homeland of my ancestors was just so rich and moving. It was such, such an amazing experience for me. So throughout this um, presentation, you have actually seen my paintings. And yeah, I'm just making sure I'm, I'm on, on cue here. Um, you've actually seen my paintings and, and um, after making eggs for so many years, I, it occurred to me to illuminate the symbology in paint um, with contemporary expressions because I am first and foremost a painter. So this tradition actually spawned a decade and plus um, long exploration of um, paintings depicting the uh, allegorical magic of this egg. Um, I've integrated uh, the supernatural powers of talisman and, and old meanings with uh, personal content throughout and um, using both oils and watercolors. And again, it was, it, it's another link to my heritage and my roots um, through a different medium. Um, 
this next painting is uh, is an homage to my mother, who unwillingly posed for me several times. Um, and the effect of this painting is actually this this is a large oil. Um, and the effect of this painting is chiaroscuro, which is a Renaissance technique which um, illuminates or puts a spotlight, if you will, on a face or a figure um, while large areas of the painting are shrouded in uh, shadows. Um, the next painting is Fertility. And in this, the, uh, 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 an act a friend actually posed for me, uh, actually the daughter of a friend actually posed for me for this, for this piece, um, representing a young woman cradling an egg with um, uh, the sunflower on it. And, and that is associated with motherhood. And um, red can also signify um, happiness and passion. Um, colors, there's there's a whole other sphere, and and I, and I, I I can't really get into it today. But colors also contribute to the significance um, of of the egg and the meaning of the egg. Um, so, and I have actually mentioned some of those colors to you. In um, I think the last painting we have here is called is entitled Source, and this this is also an oil. And I see the woman as bird and bird as woman, and both being uh, the physical embodiment of the eternal cycle and creation of life. And uh, they are the carriers of the egg. They they are they are the source. So in I that sort of concludes the 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 lecture slash presentation part of the um, part of this segment, and now I think I would like to just have a very brief demonstration on um, on the egg. Now I'm going to have to move my thingy, my, my camera. So you'll have to bear with me to just get it right. Oh, I also wanted to mention this beautiful killim, which is behind me. I don't know if people are familiar with that, uh, with killims. Um, they're really old, beautiful rugs that were, um, that this was actually brought by my parents from Ukraine through Austria, on a train, on a wagon, and it was brought to Philadelphia, if you, if you can believe that. And this was, this was heavy, this is heavy, but they, they, they got it here. So I, 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 there, I just wanted to address that in case people were wondering what that beautiful design is behind me, and, and um, that is a killing. So I will now, um, as I said, just bear with me a little bit. I'm going to take my, oh, that kind of worked out pretty well. Okay. Yeah, that, um, that looks good. I can see you. Okay, terrific. So I will show you. I've actually done a couple of different stages because it really can take quite a while. And, and I think you would all get really bored um, watching me apply the wax to the egg. And you will see that. However, I've sort of abbreviated the process by making two eggs. They are the same. These are raw because I really wanted to um, maintain the authentic um, tradition for you of the Trinity. Um, uh, uh, as I had mentioned before, you can blow out your eggs, but these are raw. And here 
is we'll start with the white egg and all of the black lines on that egg are uh, wax. And even though the lines are black, they are covering a white egg. So it's a wax resist process. So that underneath those black lines, it is actually will remain white when in the final step when the reveal happens. Then I would take this egg, I would dip it in a yellow dye. Voila! Here is the yellow egg. Now you can see what I have added on to the yellow egg. Here's the white lines. All of these designs. I will even try and bring that up. Can you see all the cross hatching on that? Yes. There's some cross hatching on that egg. Um, all the lines added that they, they were added on the yellow egg. This big uh, circle of wax was added on the yellow egg and all the lines inside that solar symbol remember i mentioned that the sun slash rosette um all the lines within they were all drawn or written on the yellow egg so now and that will all stay yellow now at this point i will okay let me move this i'm going to dip this egg in scarlet, which is a really brilliant, beautiful, br brilliant red in the scarlet dye. I did not fetch the water for my dyes from the creek uh, at daybreak today. <laughs> um, so here we go. I'm, I just want you to see, I'm dipping this right in that red dye. And we're just going to let that sit for just a moment. Um, and while that's sitting, I'm going to tell you a legend. And the legend is of a monster that is chained to a cliff. And as long as the populace kept making eggs, kept making and decorating piss and kiss, the chains would remain strong. If the people got a little lazy and they decided, hmm, I just don't feel like making piss and kiss this year, the chains would loosen and the monster was starting to get antsy. And if the chains, if, if, the, if the populace, if the people stopped making eggs altogether, the chains would break, the monster would get loose, and he would destroy the world. So, please, make some piss and kiss to keep this world safe. We need it. All right, I think this is, oh, beautiful. Okay, that's ready. Um, the longer you leave an egg in the dye, here it comes. And I've only actually made one, so well, uh, let me finish that first thought. The longer you leave the egg in the dye, the stronger your color will be. I'm going to close that right up so I don't spill this red dye all over everything. Now you just pat it nice and dry and you can write on it immediately. Um, the best eggs, these, these are really just um, supermarket eggs, chicken eggs. But the best eggs to use, so here, let me show you now. That is red. 
Um, the best eggs to use are farm eggs. Their shells are so much thicker. Okay, now I am going to light the candle and I will show you how I'm going to apply the wax to the red areas. Wait a minute, that match has been used. How did that get in the box? And I am using, because I really wanted to keep this as traditional as possible, I am using this Kiska, which I showed you earlier. And this one, you can see, has been used many, many times. Um, it gets black from the carbon, from the flame. So I heat. I heat my tool so it's quite hot. I dip it into the beeswax. I dip the pointy part. There is a little funnel in there, which you can, if you're car covering huge areas, you can actually fill the funnel and, um, and it, the, the, uh, and see now, can you see how I'm writing on there? Yes, we can see that. Okay, good. So I'm just filling in now what I want to remain red. And that is the, the center of this. You can see why um, it's very meditative. When when I I've made many 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 eggs over the years, and when my children were children were small, we would have dozens and dozens of eggs going at the same time. Our dining room table, starting from just about now until Easter was over, was constantly in motion. People would just, my kids would come home from school and they'd sit down and they'd make some eggs. And we made so many of them that that method of removing the wax for us was um, that we would, we had a special tray and we would put the eggs in that, it was like a wooden board. It wasn't really a tray. It was a wooden board with brads. And um, we would put it in the oven. Can you see how that's filling in now? I'm almost done the star. I hope this is not too boring for everyone. But it's kind of fun to see, perhaps. And do you see how I'm constantly um, dipping, heating? I'm heating the kistka in the flame of the candle. And, uh, and then drawing. And you don't, you don't really get a whole lot out of it. And I dare not put any in the funnel right now because I don't sometimes you get a really big blob unintentionally and I don't know that I don't think that would be very satisfying for me or you to see that okay now I'm going to go in here with these where the cross hatches were and I'm going to fill that in with wax as well. We're almost there. You could see why I abbreviated this. Sometimes an egg, uh, an egg can take me sometimes 
Well, anywhere from about an hour to the ostrich egg taking me, oh gosh, days. Days and days. Lesha, someone wants to know if that is a fine point, Kitska. Oh, that's such a good question. This is a medium point, Kiska. I could have probably even used a heavy point, but um, to, to make it go a little quicker, but this is fine. Okay, I think we're good. So now my final dip is going to be in black. So here's, here's the way it looks with just all the wax on it. And obviously, you know, I don't have anything on the back. However, the, the eggs are always decorated front and back. But um, yeah, just for this demonstration is just on, the, on one side of the egg. So we're all done with the candle. I'm going to blow it out. Well, I actually could have showed, well, I could light it again. I was going to say the removal of the wax, you can do in two different ways. Okay, so here's my black. I'm going to put my egg in there. Again, the longer you leave it in, the stronger that color is, although black is a pretty strong color. So while we wait for that, just for a moment, um, can we take a question or two if there are any? Sure. So someone was looking for recommendations um, on where to get Kisanka supplies. So I did put the link to Ukrainian gift shop in the chat, um, but I don't know if you have any other resources oh, for, for people. You know, you know, that's really where I get all of my... Um, that's really where I get all of my kits and all of my supplies here. I can just show you this. This is Luba's. This is the kit that you can get. Um, however, this kit only comes, this has six dyes, um, beeswax, designs, instructions, but only one medium-sized traditional kiska, which is one of these. Um, and you will, absolutely need more than one because uh people will want to do it with you so you'll have to you know you again you can go on their site and you can order um individual tools and individual dyes you don't have to get a kit they everything is done individually as well so i'm taking out the Ooh, this is nice and black now i'm going to take that egg out I'm going to pat it nice and dry. Okay. So now it looks like <laughs> doesn't look like much. I mean it it's actually still it's actually quite beautiful. But even though Um, I see that question about, she has a very old kit that's 30 years old. Do you, does she mm -hmm. need to replace the packets? I don't think so. I'll open it up and see if they're caked or not. If it's all caked, you might have to, and, but you could just try one and see. I don't think so though. I think they could last for a really long time. Yeah, they, um, I think Even they though that you can see, Go ahead, Amy. What? Oh, oh, no, I was just going to say, to my knowledge, they don't really go bad. So I, I would say no. try it out. And yeah. if you don't like how the eggs come out, then maybe replace them. Um, and when you're talking about the lines, yeah. I'm wondering if you could let us know um, how exactly do you achieve such straight lines on the eggs? Uh, is it practice or <laughs> is there sort of like a little <laughs> trick? <laughs> um, there is there is a little trick, um, but it is my hand. I just have a very, very steady hand. 
um, and I do draw some of the designs in with the pencil. Um, when I remove the when I remove the wax here, you're going to see that you don't see any of those pencil lines whatsoever. But the other thing that I do is I have rubber bands. So you can actually put a rubber band around your egg in any direction and you can draw around that rubber band to give you a nice straight line and it'll give you, you know, again, it, there, I'm just giving you a very brief demonstration, but there's many, many, many different techniques of um, sectioning and dividing the egg. You can divide the egg into in half, you could divide it into four, into six, into eight. Um, you can get really very, very complicated with those divisions. And those divisions are the ones that are going to um, take you uh, a long time. Mm -hmm. So the removal and the reveal is such that this is paint thinner. It is not traditional, but it's a really, really quick way of getting that wax off. However, before I do that, I think I will relight this candle because I will also show you the way the Ukrainian country woman, an artist used to do it. You know, I also wanted to mention, I, I think I forgot to mention this in, in my little presentation that I was witness to incredible collections of the Pisanka in Lviv where they have spectacular museums devoted exclusively to the art of Pisanka. And Lviv is in the western part of Ukraine. Wow. So the traditional way of removing wax was You would heat the egg and get it nice, soft rag. And you would heat the egg in the, you don't want to have the flame of, I don't know if you can actually see the tip of the flame, but you don't want to have the egg um, on top of the flame. You, you want it very low because the, once the carbon gets on your egg, it will not come off. So I'm starting to reveal the ladder. And this just goes, you know, again, it's very meditative. It's, uh, it's most satisfying, actually. I mean, it's really tons of fun to do it with people. But it's very satisfying to do this all on your own. So I'm... You know, I might, I don't know, maybe I'll just do the whole egg. Well, I'll, I'll show you both methods. So here is the reveal with, I'll do just a couple of other little sections so you could see. And I hope that the yellow, you know, I can really see the yellow clearly, but you might, I hope you'll be able to see the yellow color with the over zoom so it doesn't get lost and look like white because it's okay so i did i did this much can you see the yellow yep we can see that you see the difference this oh, is wow. the white and now the yellow starting to come yep and this yep. was yellow and red okay so now just to sort of speed it along a little bit I will show you how just dipping a rag into paint thinner. Okay, here we go. Here's the reveal. There we go. With, there's the reveal with the paint thinner. It's almost done. So do you see how quickly it 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 how much i've done with the if you really want to be quick wow yeah that makes a huge that, difference in time it makes a huge difference however it's definitely not as satisfying if you're just doing it on your own you know 
if you really are by yourself, it's just lovely to do it with the candle. All right, we are done. I will show you this raw egg. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about the raw egg. People say, oh my gosh, is it gonna smell? What's gonna happen to that raw egg? It is not um, in time your egg if it is not cracked or cracked in any way even a tiny little crack um if it is not it will simply dry up i have an egg of my mother's that is um that is about 60 years old and there's the the yolk becomes a little hard marble and it just you can hear it rattling inside the egg. Chick, 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 chick. Wow. So Amazing. yes, it will it will simply dry out. Many, many people do blow out their eggs, I have to say. So um I I wanted to do something very traditional for you folks to just see, you know, the ladders, as I was saying, uh, an ascent into heaven, um, the solar uh symbol star rosette and these are very 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 traditional colors um so we've used white yellow red and black so that's four colors on this egg you can have many 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 other colors on an egg you can have you can have six or seven colors um but that um so in conclusion, I, I'd be happy to answer some questions if I can, but um, thank you so very much for um, listening and allowing me to share um, my, my roots with you, my cultural heritage. It was, um, it was a delight. So just, just a quick review. Um, on the far right, obviously, are my mother's hands old and gnarled, my hands are starting to look just like that. It's really quite remarkable to me. Um, the middle, so this was, these paintings were done when I was probably in my, well, I don't know how old I was, probably in my late 40s, I would say, early 50s. Um, th those are my hands in the middle. And then you saw um, me speaking about my daughter's hands. And again, my hand, I'm holding a 40 triangle egg, it's called. And my mother, again, is using the, the black egg with the ladders. Have just, a, um, just a few minutes left so we can take some questions. Uh, this one's a good question. Is an empty egg much more fragile as you're working than a full egg? It is not. It is not more fragile. As a matter of fact, I think it's easier in some ways. However, because when you drop, if you just happen to drop um, a, a, a whole egg, it's heavy. And it can, that's why I always work, if I do a whole egg, I always work on a soft uh, surface. Um, if you drop a blown out egg, it's much less likely to crack. However, I have to say that with a blown egg, the dyeing process is different in that you have to have weights. You have to fill that hole in wherever you've blown out your egg. You have to fill that in with wax. And then you have to submerge the egg with a weight on top. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, Lesha, thank you so much for sharing your, your art and your heritage with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, happy Easter to everyone. Thank you.